here with Sandra, who's been with Fitness Science for quite a while. How many years now? I'm thinking it's close to seven years. Mm -hmm. I think so too. Yeah, Yeah. which is great. And we're going to just have a little conversation about self-care and um, kind of strategies for dealing with the new world (laughs) that we're in now and, and how you can help yourself and help your community kind of gracefully advance through this interesting stressful phase (laughs) i'm a personal trainer i'm not a support worker i'm not a mental health specialist and so i knew there was more and i'm really excited to have sandra here kind of bring in a little bit more of a connection between health and self-care and fitness and all of that so our fitness science community can benefit from one of our longtime members which is awesome (laughs) i'm working as a community counselor um, in the downtown east side, uh, at a, it's a nonprofit organization. We actually like to call it a social profit um, because the profit is in people and um, well being. This has definitely been an interesting time for us. We've had to adapt just like everybody else. And, um, you know, it's uncer- things have been uncertain. There's uncertainty around what's happening, how people are going to be working, um, how people are going to be accessing services and support. So it really has been um, a new uh, way of being these days. And what I've noticed is that uh, for many people, um, you're either isolating and um, in some ways that could mean that you've really closed down any kind of social supports or you are um, maybe out there more um, and putting yourself more at risk. So in the downtown east side, that's what we've seen, but also with um, you know, uh, people in my, my personal life, some people are either working more and harder if they're a frontline worker, or their um, whole uh, work day has been put on pause and they're finding themselves with a lot of time and they're, they're staying home. What is a simple way that you would start to introduce something like setting a boundary or choosing to make time for self-care to people? Um, I think the best place to start is with something we enjoy, you know? Um, So we have, for some of us, we have more time on our hands, but we also have been in a way given this time to reflect more. We're not going to restaurants. We're not going to visit people and be social. So we're spending more time with ourselves. And I think it's um, been a great time to really reflect on what do we like uh, to do in our lives? So self-care could look very different from from me to you, but I think starting with something you enjoy, um, Mm -hmm. you know, so getting in the garden for some people or reading, um, journaling, slowing down, um, a lot of puzzles have been uh, happening. Um, I know with my friends, we, we have been exchanging puzzles. And, uh, you know, so starting there is like the, really the first place. Do something that you enjoy. We've never gone through anything like this before. It's, it's truly uncharted territory. So, um, you know, this could be really new to have to work through things like anxiety or stress um, for some people. And, um, you know, one of the things that like fitness has been really offering people and, you know, the uh, fitness science being able to work out from home, I think that's been a really great um, self-care. Like for me personally, I've been actually working out more because I've Mm. been able to do it at home. Um, And we know what happens when we work out, we create those really amazing um, endorphins that, you know, help us with um, things like, you know, feeling good and energized and wellness. But it also allows us to connect to others. You know, we are, um, in a way, we find this like sense of belonging together when we work out together and, uh, you know, we're able to see each other and and, uh, um, connect, which is is super important, especially for some people who have been not able to, have any family or that they, they live alone and, and they're working from home. So I think that's been really great for self-care. And the other thing to remember too, is that when you're working out, you're also like, you're being mindful. So where you're focused on your movements, you're really in the present moment. Um, so you're connecting to the present with your body and your mind. Sometimes people may feel like, 
um, I don't want to, um, it's not bad enough, you know, for yeah. me to ask for help. I, I don't, I'm, I'm healthy physically. But when we're struggling emotionally, you know, that, uh, you know, it does, for some of us, it doesn't take much to kind of access our own internal resources. And it could just be a little bit of a uh, support or um, a little boost from a friend that reminds us like, oh yeah, I can do this, you know? And um, we've been um, encouraged by Dr. Henry to get out and, and get walking and, and get outside. And, and, you know, sometimes it can just be as simple as that and taking some deep breaths and looking around at the neighborhood. And, and that's all you need really to, um, kind of boost yourself in, in the right direction. And other times, yeah, you need to you need to really reach out and ask for help. How would you describe mindfulness in, in a given situation? Mindfulness is usually practiced through things like meditation. Um, but also it, it can be about taking some pauses and deep breaths. So if you know you just stop you take about three deep breaths and just really look around and pay attention to where you are in this moment so your body how your body's feeling and your mind like how you're thinking and working from there i think for a lot of us we always seem to be running towards something you know we're reactive um we're always kind of looking towards what's next and sometimes missing what's really happening in our present. And um, uh, I think that could lead to feelings of, of never getting there. You know? mm -hmm. Cause, you're, Cause you're always looking either towards your, your future um, or you're kind of running from a past. So really being able to be present in the moment, I think allows you to experience what's happening right now in front of you. You know, and I, I think most of us have a hard time being in the present. I know I do. And so yes. it takes me practicing. So that um, first step of awareness and, you know, mindfulness and awareness where you're actually intentional, um, I think is, is a thing that really helps me consider uh, what it would be like to be in the moment. I mean, that's why fitness is so great because, you know, it is, yeah. it is joining actually body and mind together and you have to focus on what you're doing. Otherwise you may, um, you know, slip or whatever. <laughs> and, you know, and I think that's why it's super important when you're, when you slip up just to be very, you know, gentle with yourself and, and, you know, like it's, this is all, um, you know, it's stuff that really makes a lot of sense, but it's not necessarily easy to do it in practice, especially when you have all these other things going on. Um, mm -hmm. I'm curious, you know, what have you been able to do to help yourself in, in terms of self-care and community? Um, yeah, so the classes are very, very great for me. I really enjoy being um, present with people via Zoom. Um, I really enjoy people's pets. That's got to be the best highlight of this thing is people having to exercise with their pets. Um, for myself, I've struggled a lot. I found that I had a great routine before this started, like a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And then the world changed and my routine fell off. So I've struggled quite a bit with the kind of mindfulness and mental support things I had put in place before, uh, mm -hmm. trying to figure out where they fit now. Um, and so I actually just ended up they're in my agenda now. I, I do quite well with a schedule. So, mm -hmm. um, because I also in that way, don't ask myself to do too much, which is another tendency that I have. Um, so I have them scheduled out in little, little breaks of just like, you know, mindfully doing the dishes, which doesn't sound that attractive, but it works for me. Um, and, uh, and then I, I'm training alone more than I ever was, uh, which is new. Um, and I think that now I'm kind of through the phase where I hated it um, because initially it was quite isolating and frustrating. Uh, and now I enjoy it. And now it is, I would consider it to be part of my mindfulness practice as well. The hope of mindfulness is that you are more thoughtful in your moments and your experiences. So taking some um, deep breaths and pausing is an internal resource. Um, but also asking for help is one as well, or, you know, um, creating structure, you mm -hmm. know, healthy, healthy eating habits, 
you know, those are all resources that we can access. So figuring out what works best for you and then just being like, I like what you said about even like having it structured in your day, being intentional around this because it's, it's, it's creating that habitual pattern of wellness um, helps you access it easier. The last thing I wanted to discuss is um, I guess ways that you can encourage your community, whatever it happens to be, to also start to investigate self-care. You know, it's, it's tough because people are making choices that are, are putting themselves at risk all the time and our loved ones. And, uh, you know, for some people, if they have a tendency to um, withdraw, then they're even withdrawing more during this mm -hmm. isolation time, you know? And so, yeah, it's really tough. I think, you know, we have to be very creative and how we're reaching out to people. I was supporting a family member just really great for the first couple of months. And then we became reactive together and, mm -hmm. you know, got in a family fight um, over nothing. So, you know, understanding that, you know, we're trying to support our people and our community and also being aware that we're struggling too, mm -hmm. uh, you know, so reaching out and being creative and listening to music. We've had some fun um, Zoom uh, <laughs> social gatherings that have just been hilarious because yeah. everybody's talking at once and, <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, but, you know, that's not a simple, um, there's not a simple answer to that. I just think like continuing to reach out and know that you, there's only so much you can do to help, mm -hmm. help each other. But um, yeah, slowing down and being creative. You know, I really think this is an important time to consider each other's strengths and to have strength-based conversations, you know, and that really focusing on, you know, sometimes it's a really good time to really kind of delve into the problem and, and um, get into it. But, you know, with, with the uncertainty of the world these days and all the different stresses, I really think it's useful just to have strength-based, compassionate conversations. Thanks so much for doing this, Sandra. I don't know if there's anything else that you want to bring up. Um, uh, no, I think this is great. And, and um, thank you for inviting me into this conversation and community of care. I'm glad mm -hmm. I'm here.